everyone, I'm Mayor Mike, and today we have Karen Dostel from the uh, Audubon Society. Welcome, Karen, to the show. Hi, thanks. Thanks for having us here. So one of the cool things that we want to talk about today is not only what the Audubon Society does, uh, but we're going to talk about birds sure. and migrations yeah. and what we can do to help them migrate. Yeah, so, to, to give them safe passage as they're moving from their wintering grounds to their summer grounds and in the fall, the reverse. And this is the perfect time to do this. So let's start out by telling us a little bit about yourself okay. and the Audubon Society and your role there. Okay, let's see. I have been involved in the Stevens Point Schools for my whole career, and I ran the Boston School Forest for about half that career, retiring from there just a few years ago. And I am now the president of our local chapter of Audubon, the Aldo Leopold Audubon Society. And um, we are an organization that not only advocates for birds, but also a conservation organization where um, we work to protect habitat, and bring people's awareness of um, all kinds of conservation issues that might be in our community or in the larger world, actually. And that's great. You know, when I get the bird, it usually means something else, but birds are important to our community and the world around us, the environment. My favorite part, of course, is the fact that they eat a lot of the bugs that I don't like. Sure. Um, but there's tons and tons of benefits, and the birds that migrate are especially important because they have to travel through different environments. One of the cool things that the uh, Audubon Society is doing now is this Safe Passage program. Tell me about that. Sure. It's our Safe Passage campaign. And um, we're trying to bring awareness of what we can do um, with our buildings, especially, to make them bird safe. Okay. So one of the uh, one of the dangers that birds face in their annual migratory journeys is glass. And um, they, they don't, they, the reflection in the glass looks just like the rest of their environment, the trees, the grass, mm -hmm. the sky. And so collisions with gl glass is uh, a really big uh, problem for birds. One other thing that we've learned over time is that birds migrate at night using light from the stars mm -hmm. as well as the Earth's uh, magnetic, um, what do I want to say? The magnetic, magnetic field. field, yeah, as well as the Earth's magnetic fields. And um, when we light up the skies at night, it confuses the birds, they'll come down towards the light, and um, they may crash into the windows. But one other thing that happens is that they find themselves in an urban environment where they're not finding the water and the food that they need to recharge during the daylight hours. Um, so most of the birds affected are passerines or perching birds. These are the birds that we find in our yards and our parks. Mm -hmm. And um, just one building can cause major problems for birds. Um, in one week, in 2017, 400 passerine birds um, were caught in the floodlights of a Texas skyscraper. Um, another uh, study, ongoing study in Chicago, found that 30,000 birds were killed by a single bird uh, building over a 20-year period. Uh, reducing lighting at night can cut those bird deaths by 80 percent. When you say reducing lighting at night, now we don't have a lot of skyscrapers in the city, but we do have some six-story buildings or more. Some of them, you know, um, have a lot of glass. What can those businesses do to help reduce uh, the dangers for birds? Uh, you know, they, they fly into the glass, uh, the bird could get injured or worse. Um, and then, of course, they have to clean the glass. What can businesses who have those larger buildings, what can they do to help mitigate some of those dangers? There's a, several very simple things that are actually cost savings. And one of those is just reducing the amount of light. Okay. You can reduce the amount of light by shutting the switches off inside. Um, blinds on the windows help. If people are using the, the rooms at night, 
um, having the blinds shut very simply okay. reduces the amount of light. Um, and um, you can put decals on windows that help. Um, Great. So um, you actually have a special program. If businesses want to get involved and be proactive, um, they can become part of your Safe Passage program. Tell me about the program that's available for businesses. Sure. We know that bright lights um, in cities disorient uh, birds while migrating at night. Um, what we, uh, what Aldo Leopold Auto Audubon Society is doing is uh, heading up a Safe Passages for Birds. Um, and we have the backing of the city leadership, so we really appreciate um, your involvement too. So what we're doing is we're approaching um, owners and tenants of the multi-story buildings, especially buildings with a lot of glass in the area, and we're asking them simply to partner with us. It's basically an awareness campaign. Um, we have uh, informational packets that uh, will go to our partners. We have window decals. Um, designating that building as a safe passages building. Um, we will come to meetings and talk about what we, what our efforts are. And we hope that not only um, the business will make changes in the building, very simple cost saving changes, but then the employees will become aware too of what they can do in their homes. And um, so we hope that it has a ripple effect around the community. And if my business, uh, let's say our, our business, yeah. wants to get involved, what do we need to do? Who do we contact and, and what is our obligation? And then uh, what services do you provide in relation to that? Yeah, you can um, contact us at Aldo Leopold Audubon on our website. There's a Safe Passages tab to pull down and yeah. it'll explain all of that. And as a business, you, as you're going to give me a, a, yeah, a sponsor... You, yeah, we, we'll give you decals, we'll give you information packets, um, and uh, we'll come in and go through the building and tell you what you can do to make it a, a bird safe building. Um, we'll also become, uh, we'll give out five free memberships oh, nice. uh, to uh, the owner of the building or other employees. Or however they want to So they can it. get, um, become um, more involved in Audubon and come to our programs and meetings. And um, we also run some great field trips in the community yeah. too, so. Um, well, you know, one thing you mentioned, you know, Stevens Point has a, a pretty strong conservation background, uh, we, you know, with climate change and all the things that are going around on around us in our environment. We want to do the best to be good stewards of the environment. And I know the business owners feel the same way. By turning off at some of those lights at night, you're, you're saving those energy costs. Right now, I think we're somewhere in the 26, 27 percent uh, renewable for the cost of electricity. But the businesses sometimes leave lights on for security reasons. The point I'm trying to make is that you don't need all of the lights on for security, uh, especially on those taller buildings. And, and turning off a majority of those lights is going to benefit not only the migratory patterns of the bird, but the, the environment as well, and it's going to save you money. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not only um, the interior lighting, but exterior lighting as well. Mm -hmm. And we're not asking that um, the lights are off year-round. It's just for those few weeks um, in the spring and in the fall when the birds are moving through in, in big numbers. Okay. I don't know if you noticed, um, a week ago, we didn't have leaves on trees. Right. And on Sunday night, we had that big storm come through. Mm -hmm. And did you notice how many birds were there Monday morning? Yeah. Birds that, you know, uh, downfall of warblers and, and um, the catbirds and all kinds of those migratory birds were suddenly there. So they came in just ahead of that storm. Wow. And uh, so they will move through in huge numbers. They pick up. Uh, this on Doppler radar, uh -huh. and you can you can, you can pick up the bird migrations yes, on Doppler yes, radar. Yes. That's pretty amazing. There's the density of the number of birds is so much they pick it up on radar. So the businesses that want to get involved now have an avenue, and they know a little bit more about the bi bird migration patterns. What can I do as an ordinary citizen in a in a regular house that has windows and occasionally birds run into them? What sorts of things can I do uh, to make my home a little more safe or friendly? Uh, for those birds and migratory birds especially. Do you feed the birds? Uh, we do. Okay. My wife and I have bird feeders in the back. Okay, then one important thing is the placement of your feeder. Okay. You want uh, the feeder either 30 feet away from a window mm -hmm. or within 
one or two feet of the window. Okay. Because if it's closer to the window, they're going to slow down as they come in, and so they're less likely to crash. Or at least you're not attracting them to the window if your okay. feeder is farther away. Well, I'm away. in good shape because it's at least 30 feet from the okay. windows. Uh, so that helps. That helps. So at our house, what we do, um, a friend of mine, Jeff Vandeloup, does the stained glass. He calls them loop stars. Oh, yeah. And we hang those in the window. They're colorful. They bring pretty light into the house. But they also act as one of those things that you talked about, letting the bird know that, hey, there's something solid here. Yeah. Um, so those are available, and you can get them almost anywhere. But I would encourage you to support local artists. Yeah, that these sounds stickers, beautiful. Yeah, these yeah. stickers are going to be really great. So if you notice behind us, yeah. we've got little stickers on the window. They're a little faded and outdated. But you You've got some new yeah. ones. I have some brand new ones for you. This is a company called Window Alert, and they make these decals. Um, to us, it looks like a translucent sticker on the window, but the birds see it as a big, bright blob, and it deters them from hitting the windows. Sure. So um, we mentioned the stickers. We mentioned the the, um, um, the the bird decals. Yeah. Where can someone get those? If I want to put those on my house. Can I order them online? Can I you get can them through order the them online. I know that Schmeekly Reserve Visitor Center sells these too. Okay. So you can go right there and pick out which design you want. There's all kinds of things from leaves and geometric shapes and yeah. you know whatever. Yeah, they're, you find they're artistic pleasing. too. So yeah. you know humans get to enjoy them as well. Yeah. There's another one. Um, let's see. This company is called Artscape, and they cut these a certain way, and they're they're rather attractive. Uh huh and it does the same thing. It, same sort of theory. So it, it, it kind of diffuses or, or scatters the, the UV, UV light to exactly. make birds see it as a, a bigger something that's here. Don't yep. go there. Yep. Awesome. So that's another way. Another very effective um, possibility. This is called a, a Zen wind curtain. You know, yeah, I was looking at this. So this is and, something uh, you can literally make yourself yep. with some paracord. Yeah, we made this at uh, last Saturday at Schmeekly Reserve at our Junior Audubon. And it's just paracord, knotted, uh, and then you string the vertical piece uh -huh. through the knot in the horizontal piece. And then you just get some, oh, uh, You could probably do it with tape or something or, or alligator well, clips, something. You could hang it, and you hang it yeah. in front of the window, yeah. but like right up against the window, not five feet in front of it like we are. Right. You would put that right against the glass uh, mounted to the frame of the window so it hangs in front of the glass. And then those vertical uh, pieces look to the birds like an object that they simply cannot fit their wings through. Wow. And so this is probably even one of the most... Um, one of the better ways of deterring birds. Yeah, and you know, and it, this is a pretty basic design, but I imagine someone with a little more creativity than me could add some colored paracord in here and and make it, you know, kind of pretty looking for for people to see too. It'll 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 work for the birds either way. Form and function, I love it. Yeah. So, so that's a Zen uh, wind curtain. So yeah. just to recap, if someone wants to get involved in your Safe Passage program, yes, they can contact you through the uh, Aldo Leopold Audubon website? Yeah, go to our website and we have a tab for Safe Passages that explains our Safe Passage campaign and uh, how businesses can get involved. We will um, come in, um, meet with your facilities manager or other staff members and explain how we can make birding, birds, uh, bird safe buildings in Stevens Point in the area and uh, by simply reducing lighting and uh, during the weeks of migration in the spring and the fall. And uh, yeah, we have all the information, That's an great. information package, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, look forward to hearing from uh, from businesses in the area. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Karen, for joining us today. We've, we've learned a lot about migratory bird patterns and what we can do to make that safe. We've learned about feeder placement sure. um, and what we can do to best, uh, most effectively feed our feathered friends. Yeah. We've learned what we can do in our homes to, to make things a little bit safer. And we've learned how to contact the Audubon Society in case they want to get involved to do some of the other cool things you're involved with, like bird counts and, and uh, bird watching, that sort of thing. Yep. They can get involved and you meet relatively regularly. Yep. And you we, get... meet, uh, we meet, um, we have uh, in-person programs again at the ARDC Lincoln Center okay. um, every month. And so you can find that on our website as well. We have uh, speakers, um, 
from all walks of life, all kinds of interesting things about nature and birds. And this Wednesday, uh, we have Dan Jackson coming, and he's going to talk to us about damselflies and dragonflies. So. Now, we're recording this on May 13th, so okay. when you say this Wednesday, you mean next week Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, so if yeah. someone's watching it after that, yeah. uh, after the 18th, obviously, that won't be available. But you record a lot of this stuff too, right? We record it all and put it on our YouTube channel, so you can find past programs there as well. And the YouTube channel is what? Aldo Leopold Audubon Society. That makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, you'll find it right there. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. Again, thank you for joining us. Uh, I appreciate the information. I know our listeners and viewers do. Uh, and if they want to get involved, they've got all sorts of avenues now. Hopefully you've learned a little bit today uh, about what we can do to protect migratory birds and the birds in general in our community. Uh, and thanks again, Karen, from the Audubon Society. And until next time, I'm Mayor Mike, and we've been Talking Point. For more information, visit aldoleopoldaudubon.org slash safe passage. Talking Point with Mayor Mike Wiese is produced by Stevens Point Community Media, stevenspoint.com slash TV.